In today's video, we're going to load test the MXR3300, then we'll parallel it with the 3200, all while using my trailer that has two AC units and more. So we'll start off by doing the load test on the new 3300 unit, and then we'll parallel it with the older 3200 unit, which that one has 23 amps versus 25. Now these parallel cords come with the generator with both of them, and you're supposed to actually use a generator parallel box like that, so you can hook up both generators. And this is per the manufacturer itself. I talk to them a little bit about it because these will work when you do have them plugged into each other but you can't get the proper loads out of it it won't do the heavy loads and continue working properly so according to the manufacturer you have to use a parallel box to get both of these together so and i actually already tried it it didn't actually work like it was supposed to but We'll get started by turning on a couple of the AC units in here and also turning on the microwave and more. And I'll show you a few interesting things along the way. And I'll show you the power live as we go with that little box right there. So let's get started. So this little load meter is something I built a long time ago. And so basically what it'll show us is our volts and then our amps over here. It'll also show us our watts along with the hertz. And then this is also kilowatt hours. So if you wanna measure how much power that you're using, if you have your trailer maybe plugged into the side of your house, you can see how many kilowatts you've used. And that's just a power factor there. That's not really so important for what we're looking at. That'll change closer to one as we get started with the load. So, and then we'll hook up the other generator and I'll show you both of them working together and a couple of interesting things along the way. So we'll go ahead and get started throw that load meter up in the corner so now you can watch it live as we go so i'm going to go in here and turn on a few things in the trailer like some lights real quick and this is all on the dc circuit so you won't see any change i'm going to make sure this power control system is set at 30 amps which i kind of already have a love-hate relationship with this thing but okay now we're going to go ahead and turn on my ac unit this is the first one and i'm going to just turn this on cool and low and go ahead and watch the meter on the left and so now you can see that kick up and the generator didn't hesitate at all to fire up this one. And this is a 15K AC unit and it doesn't have a soft start. This is the bigger one inside my trailer. And this is a 30 amp service trailer, by the way. And these newer ones, these Coleman kind of mock series, these are also like 10 to 15% more efficient than my older ones that I used to have in my other trailer if you follow along since then. But I'm also gonna go over here and do a comparison to kind of check the amps. And as you kind of look over there on the left, you see about 10 and a half amps or a little bit more. And the power control system says 10 as well. It doesn't really round up, I guess. But anyway, I'll show you a couple things I don't like about that later on in the video. That is a 13.5 KAC unit. It does not have a soft start either. And the one generator will not fire them up both by themselves. So we're not gonna do that by firing up two, but I will put this on high. And then I'm gonna go over and turn on the other one here in a second, just on fan to increase the loads. So that's another half amp there. Come back over here real quick. And I'm gonna turn this fan on high all the way. I'll turn on a light and then we can go ahead and turn this on. So let me press this button here. We'll go to kind of skip around one more time. Hold on. And now we'll put this on high. This is gonna be about another 2.5 amps. You'll see that on the meter as well. And this will actually help circulate the air in my trailer quite a bit more, even though the AC unit really isn't on cool, but it still helps circulate the cold air better. All right, now for a microwave test, I'm gonna put 40 seconds on here, I guess. And I do have something in the trailer or in the microwave, I should say. And now you see the generator go up to about its max load at 25, almost 26 amps. So we take a look up here, it's saying the same thing right at 25 amps. And this generator does a good job at handling max loads at 25 amps. If you noticed, you never saw the red light flash at all as it kicked on the AC unit or even the microwave. And I think the 145 cc engine rated at about the 3300 start watts is just a good matchup. It does a great job. But anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this ready to parallel up as the microwave kind of drops back down. I'm gonna turn off everything and then I'll cut the video real quick. We'll come back and we'll get these paralleled up and I'll show you a couple interesting things with these uh, generators paralleled. So that's what I'm gonna do here real quick. So we'll switch out. All right, so I have both of these fired up and running and this is gonna be our master generator because that's the one we fired up first. This will be the secondary or the slave unit and then into the parallel box. And again, with these parallel cables they provide you with. Now, I haven't really seen any of these parallel boxes where you take these cords and plug it into the box. Most of the boxes come with their own cords that you just plug into the generator. So not sure what to do with those. 
Okay, so we'll start off the same way and we'll start with the AC unit um, on low. And if you watch the meter again, it hardly kind of moves much with both generators plugged in. Kind of a quick jolt and away it goes. So we'll let that run just for a few seconds, then we'll head back over here and we'll turn on the second one now. So come back around this way. All right, so we're gonna turn on the second unit and then you can go ahead and watch the meter again as this second one fires up. So I'm gonna turn this on low. We'll get it fired up, watch the meter. Boom, and away it goes. Now you can see how it jumped up a lot in wattage just with two, or at least amperage, it jumped up to 36 amps, even with two generators. So that's why one generator alone is not gonna be able to fire up two of these, especially when it's already running uh, just over 10 amps. So I'm gonna turn that one on high back there, do the same thing with this one. And this is gonna be on high, so we'll get right about 20 amps with both of these running. And away it goes. So doing about 2330 watts. And you can see up there, that's also showing right about 20 amps as well. So we'll turn on some more stuff. So now I'm gonna turn on my electric water heater. And this is one of the things that bugs me. Watch the meter. You can see it jams all the way up to about 32 amps and stops at 31. And now it's actually going to drop back down because the power control system in my trailer said that you are over the 30 amps, even though it was only going to be over about, you know, by one or two amps, it actually kind of shuts it down. So right now, both of the ACs are probably running. And if you look up here, this will actually say on the water heater as I kind of cycle through and it says amps at max. So it's going to be waiting. So the water heater is actually not working right now and only the two AC units are working while you know it tries to find more power from something so this is one of the things i kind of don't like about the power control system but it is a good feature for people who don't pay attention but also something else that happened so while i was doing my test this generator ran out of gas so it's actually not running anymore and you can see the light is off i actually thought it had some more fuel in it but it actually didn't but now this generator is running both of my ac units you can see right there right about 20 amps and 2300 watts and it's doing a good job we come back in here real quick so we take a look up on this uh, meter as well it's also saying 20 amps kind of hard to see sorry about that but this one is still blowing nice cold air and the unit's still on and running and then also the back unit over here at least a front unit i guess i should say this one is also running as well so the you know the generator handles both of them really well but i'm going to get them fired both back up again Okay, so now these are both running again, and one thing I wanted to show you is with the power, uh, or with an actual voltmeter here, let me show you something. These generators are cycling back and forth about 100 RPM. So this one's dropping, then it's going back up to about, you no know, 10 amps here in a second. So it comes back down, now back up over 10 amps, and the other generator is doing the same thing. And I want you to listen, as they both kind of cycle back and forth about 50 to 100 RPM. So drops goes up kind of goes back down so it's kind of weird how they're both doing that versus sometimes other generators are paralleled they pretty stay pretty steady okay so I'll show you the microwave test again now with both generators parallel we'll put this back at 40 seconds and then you guys can go ahead and watch the meter on the left again so put that to 40 and start watch the meter Boom, up the way it goes, and then I get the shutdown from the power control system. So here's one of the things that's interesting is that it's shutting down the front AC unit and allowing the microwave to run, and that's what that control system does is it sheds power. For me, I don't kind of like it because I'm trying to do certain things in my trailer because I like to use it for testing. But it does help people from overloading their trailers and not pumping 50 amps into your trailers with two generators paralleled out there. So that AC is still working and the one on the front is just kind of on standby while the microwave was working. So for the most part, 
you know two of these generators is kind of overkill for a 30 amp service trailer obviously now you could buy a really small one to kind of go along with it but even then the price of these are only about 550 to 600 dollars each so for a trailer like this you're gonna have tons of power but those you know control systems allow you to not pump 50 amps in your trailer and kind of fry up some of your wiring so it is good for people who may not have a clue about what they're doing so other than that let me know what you guys think about these max peating rods generators the 3300 or the two or the 3200 that's uh you know right next to it there i hope you guys like the video be sure to smash the like button and subscribe and until then i hope to see you guys next time